Hello again, my name's John. I'm a retired cook from the northeast of England in the UK and welcome to my latest bread recipe. And in this one, and with the summer barbecue season approaching, I'll show you how to make my best ever burger buns. The sesame topped burger buns are soft, light and delicious. As you can see from the image, they look and you can imagine taste so good. Absolutely perfect for any hamburger, whether it's beef, chicken, lamb, pork or veggie. And very easy to make. And as you can see, another fantastic use for your crumpet rings. More about those a little later. You can view the ingredients list and full written method for this recipe on the recipe page on the channel's website. I leave a link in the description under the video or you can click on the eye icon top right of the screen to take you directly to the recipe page. I'd also like to thank my Patreon, PayPal and Super Thanks supporters for their very kind help in producing these tutorial videos. I'll be giving you all a name splash and shout out a little later in the video. OK, let's get on with today's recipe. OK, as always, I'll start by making sure my yeast is alive and well. Get your milk and water warmed up to around 40 degrees Celsius, that's 104 Fahrenheit. Add your sugar and mix it until it's dissolved. Next, add your medium sized eggs. Each egg, when shelled, it should weigh around 50 grams each. If you don't use or like eggs, add another 100 grams of milk instead. Give those a quick mix in. Now add your yeast and mix until everything is combined. Once mixed, set it aside to proof. And if you don't see any activity after 10 minutes, your yeast must be dead and it needs replacing. And that's the main reason we always test before starting any bread recipe. For this recipe, I'll be using my stand mixer, but if you don't have a mixer, you can use my no need method. Check out any of my no need bread recipes and follow the procedure, but obviously using these ingredients and quantities. In fact, I'll also post a no need version of this recipe on the website, so either way, you should be able to make these. I wouldn't recommend hand kneading this dough as it's quite soft and sticky and takes quite a while to knead but not impossible if you want to give it a try. Start by adding your now active yeast mixture to the bowl. Make sure you scrape it all out. Next, add your bread flour. Now sprinkle the salt over the flour. Finally, add the softened butter. OK, get the bowl under the mixer and attach the door hook. Right, I've set the machine away on a medium fast speed. I'm using number 4 on my KitchenAid mixer. Once all the ingredients have come together, I'll set my timer onto count up mode. It should take around 7 to 8 minutes on this speed. And what you're looking for is the dough to eventually pull away from the sides of the bowl. If you use a slower speed, this will take a little longer. And while that's mixing, you can oil a large bowl for the dough to proof in. I'm using a teaspoon of vegetable oil in mine. After six minutes, you can see that the dough is starting to pull away from the sides and sticking to the hook. And there you go, after 8 minutes the dough has pulled away leaving the sides of the bowl nice and clean. Ok, using my bowl scraper I'll clean down the hook and turn the dough out onto my worktop. You should now have a beautifully smooth and silky ball of dough. And like I said earlier, this is quite a sticky dough. 
and the best way to handle this is to rub a little oil on your hands and that will prevent the dough from sticking. Now form the dough into a ball shape as shown. Once the dough ball has been formed, add it to the oiled bowl and cover it. Now I like to use a shower cap for this. And if you're interested, we have a good selection of shower caps in various colours and patterns in the website shop. I'll leave a link in the description box below this video. OK, now get the bowl into a nice warm spot. I like to use the oven with just the light bulb on. Wherever you're proofing your dough, set your timer for 45 minutes. Once that first proofing time is up, get it turned out onto your worktop again. Once more, to avoid sticking, add a little more oil to your hands. Now knock the dough back. This simply means force all of the built up gas out of it. You can be quite aggressive with this. You won't harm the dough in any way. Form the dough into a ball again. And there you go, with slightly oily hands there's no stickage and I know this will give some of you some confidence who find handling sticky dough a bit daunting. Right, get it back into the bowl, cover it again. Now get it back into its warm spot and set your timer for 30 minutes this time. Let's talk a little about the best way to bake these. I find baking them much better in these 10 cm or 4 inch crumpet rings. They keep the buns individual and formed perfectly round. You can also use this hamburger bun tin for a slightly smaller diameter but taller burger bun, ideal for double stack burgers. This tin is also fantastic for small layered cakes. I leave links to my UK Amazon affiliate page where I bought them. And I'm not being sponsored by these companies by the way. And here's the rings and the hamburger tin all greased up and ready to go. I've used lard to grease mine but if you don't use pork products just use a solid vegetable fat or butter. Don't use oil because it tends to bead up on non-stick surfaces. Right, time's up on the second proofing. And once again, get it turned out onto your worktop. Now this recipe will make 12 of these fantastic buns. 6 in the rings and 6 in the bun tin. But if that's a bit too much for you, you can absolutely half this recipe no problem. But I like to make a large batch and freeze what I'm not going to use straight away. It takes exactly the same time, energy and temperature to bake 12 as it does to bake 6. OK, once you've knocked back the dough again, it's time to start portioning out the dough. For the rings I need 6 at 100 grams, that's 3.5 ounces each. Right, I'll set my scales to 0 and using my bench scraper I'll start to portion it out. But try to work in grams though guys. My gram is exactly the same as your gram. OK, that's 6 for the rings. And for the hamburger tin, I need 6 at 85 grams or 3 ounces each. Once the dough is divided, form each piece into little dough balls as shown. Check out my dinner roll video on how to master this rolling technique. It's dead easy once you get the hang of it. Right, that's all 12 dough balls rolled and ready to go. Now place the first 6 100 grammers into the ring moulds. Give each one another quick roll before placing it in the ring. Now I don't want to impede the dough from rising by covering with a cloth, so to prevent them from drying out, give each ball a thin coat of oil. Right, get that tray into the same warm spot where you proofed the main dough. In my case, back in the oven with just the light bulb on. 
Now do exactly the same if you're using the hamburger tray. OK, now I'll get that into the warm spot too. And I'll allow those to rise for 40 minutes. To give the tops of the buns a rich golden brown colour and something for the sesame seeds to adhere to, mix up an egg wash as shown. And once again, if you can't have or just don't like eggs, you can use milk instead. Right, that 40 minutes is up, so I'll take these out now. And as you can see, they've risen nicely. They'll also spring quite a bit when they're baking in the oven. Before going any further, preheat your oven to 170 degrees Celsius, that's 340 Fahrenheit, or gas mark 3. Time to apply the egg wash. I'll show you how to do one, then I'll fly through the rest. Now this is where you have to brush carefully on both the ring buns and the tin buns. Use as little egg wash as you can. Don't go all the way down to the rings or the tin. If you get any egg wash between the dough and the metal, it will cause the buns to stick when baking. So go very lightly and deliberately, guys. Now before the egg wash dries, take a pinch of your sesame seeds and sprinkle them over the bun as shown. And a little safety tip, be mindful at your barbecues of anyone who may have allergies to sesame seeds. If you do manage to get any egg wash between the dough and the metal, just mop it up with a piece of paper kitchen towel. Right, I'll quickly fly through the rest of them. And that's it, they're all ready to bake. Now get them into your preheated oven and set your timer for 25 minutes. And to allow for the oven spring, make sure your shelves are far enough apart. And yes, I'm speaking from experience. And while those are baking, I hope you don't mind if I give my four recipe books a quick shout out. The books have lots of our favourite recipes from our work kitchens in them. And also, book four in this series is totally dedicated to bread recipes. And by popular demand, the skeleton style oven gloves are now available too. Just click on the eye icon top right of your screen and that will take you to the website shop where all of these items are available now. When there's approximately 10 minutes left on the baking time, I like to turn them around and swap shelves. And that's for even baking and colour. Try to do this quickly and as safely as possible as you don't want to lose too much heat from the oven. Right, time's up and they're looking fantastic. So get them out and onto a wire rack. And I really hope you agree, they look amazing. The oven spring and the beautiful golden brown colour. And as always, the aroma of freshly baked bread is the absolute best. Now these buns are very soft and delicate when they first come out of the oven. The ones in the hamburger tin should come out easily, but be very gentle with them. The ones in the rings need to cool off for five minutes first. But using a fish slice or thin metal spatula, you can lift them off the tray and onto the wire rack for now. Not simply to allow the air to circulate around the bottom of the buns. Right, they've been on the wire rack for a while now and it should be safe enough to get them off the rings. Have a small knife handy to free any that may be a little stuck. As you can see, the egg wash caught a little on this one, but no biggie, just take your time, they will come out. And now, let them completely cool. Now that they're cool, you can see just how soft and light they are. Right, as a bonus, I'll very quickly go through how I make and stack my hamburger indoors. The burger or patty should start off larger than the bun, as they do shrink when cooking. 
15% fat, ground or minced beef. Nothing else apart from salt and pepper in a hot skillet. Flip the burger after 4 minutes and add the cheese. Cut the bun in half and butter both sides. Place the buns in the hot pan butter side down. Once they're brown and toasted, remove them from the pan. First ingredient is the ketchup on the bun base. Then the lettuce. These two create a barrier to stop the meat juices soaking into the bread. Next add the burger and cheese. Now add a slice of beef tomato. Next some sort of pickle, or in my case thinly sliced red onion. And finish off with mayo. Then the bun top. And doesn't that look absolutely mouth-watering? Don't go away, I'll be back in one moment for a taste. Serve with fries, pure heaven on a plate. And oh yes, absolutely delicious. One magnificent juicy burger in the best burger bun ever. Even if I say so myself. You'll really have to try these guys. Massive thumbs up for this one. The fries are not bad either. And as promised at the beginning of the video, here is the latest list of my Patreon, PayPal and Super Thank You button supporters. And they are Johnny Pong Tsupsing, Krista Shakespeare, Mark Miller, Kayla Howes, Nigel Hollingworth, Jared Gillespie, Ryan Whaler, Gail De Gregori, Leon Edwin Taylor, John Duggan, Shug PhD, Jens K, Jeremy Larkin, Don Bussey, Jacob Duenke, Mark Muirhead, and Chris Leary. And there's also one who wishes to remain anonymous. Thanks very much, guys. I really do appreciate all that you do in supporting the channel. Well, thank you again for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe by hitting the circle above. If you do subscribe, activate the bell icon next to the subscribe button on my channel page. And by doing that, you'll be automatically notified every time I upload a new video. And in the meantime, here's a few of my other videos and playlists that you may want to watch. So, until the next time, be safe in your kitchen, and bye for now.